wait. Before we conquer the universe, let's take some time to get up to speed. Aria is the VST instrument which plays instant orchestra and all of the Garretton libraries. In the folder for your recording program, you should have a VST folder where all of your plugins reside. This is where I have the installer place the ARIA VST DIL files. I use Cakewalk Sonar, but all recording programs have the same basic functions. After installing ARIA, I go to the Plugin Manager in Cakewalk. I need to have the Plugin Manager scan the VST folder to register all new VSTs. When the scan is over, all of my VSTs are listed according to type in long lists. These can be organized so they're easier to find as you build a project. I'm opening up my Instruments by Type list. You can see that my ARIA DIL files are already there. All I had to do to set that up was to go to the far left hand column, choose ARIA, and then add it to the appropriate category. So that's the routine that should be done every time something new is added, either an audio effect or an instrument. Now, in Sonar's main screen, I go to Insert and place ARIA in the project. Naturally, I need one MIDI track to be connected to ARIA, but I also have the option of having either one audio track or all 16 that are available. For this project, we'll use just one audio track. ARIA is now placed in the synth rack, and the interface comes up. Moving ARIA from its default position, we can see that the associated tracks are already there in Sonar. I click in ARIA's first slot and go to the Instant Orchestra menu. I'm going to choose an instrument, a patch, a sound, which will be a good way to start our project. From the blending texture list, I've chosen Easy Strings Brass Winds. This is one of the patches in Instant Orchestra that plays chords from one note. Up here is where it shows that this sound is coming out of the first stereo channel from ARIA. There are 16 available, and they're labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, accounting for the mono channels that make up stereo tracks. Now we're looking more carefully at how ARIA is connected with Sonar. Here's the MIDI track we had inserted. In the track header, we can see the output is indeed going to ARIA. The MIDI channel is set to 1, which is what we want. The first slot in ARIA is automatically set to channel 1. And here we're choosing my MIDI keyboard for input, set to Omni, which means it'll broadcast on all channels. Clicking on the default names for these tracks, we can name them appropriately. I'm calling this Easy Strings Plus for both the audio and the MIDI track. Expanding the audio track's header, we can look to see how it's connected with ARIA. There's the list of all the possibilities, all 16 different audio outs. They're logically labeled. We're using OUT 1-2 stereo. The next one is OUT 3-4 stereo, and so forth. We click the header of the MIDI track to activate it. As I hit the key on my keyboard, look at the meter in the audio track. That's showing that the signal's coming through. We're all set. We have more slots to fill with instruments and a project to launch. Next up, using the control panel in our end.